In Vietnam, human traffickers are not so different to their victims. In this article, we find that traffickers and their victims share many of the same vulnerabilities. The article is based on analysis of court documents of just over 100 successfully prosecuted human trafficking cases. This is a very large data set, but unfortunately due to its nature, it's not fully representative. Firstly, the nature of the data means that it only includes information about prosecuted traffickers, who tend to be the more low-level recruiters who are known to their victims and who are present in Vietnam. And secondly, this data set, uh, while it includes uh, information about one, a very prevalent form of human trafficking, and that is cross-border sexual exploitation of women, it's not fully representative of all forms of trafficking that affect the country. The data includes information of over 200 traffickers and their 200 victims. And people may be surprised to learn that actually only 60% of the traffickers were men and the rest were women. We also understand from this data that the vast majority of both traffickers and victims are poorly educated and almost all of them come from an ethnic minority background. Ethnic minority people start from a position of disadvantage and they tend to have higher poverty rates and face more challenges in accessing government services. Given this data, it's clear that in the vast majority of cases, these recruiters are resorting to the crime due to poverty and exclusion, and their victims are vulnerable for the exact same reasons. These recruiters are not high-level crime bosses. The vast majority of them are first-time offenders and they're not receiving huge amounts of money for their crime. The average is around $1,500, which is not a lot, but it is a huge incentive for a poor ethnic minority person. This is why in our article we ask, is prosecution the best way to end human trafficking? We defend that uh, the fight against human trafficking should focus more on prevention and less on prosecuting these low-level offenders. While achieving justice and receiving compensation can be very important for victims, prosecuting low-level recruiters such as these can simply perpetuate the cycle of poverty, exclusion and crime. As an alternative, Blue Dragon has developed proven strategies to reduce vulnerability to both trafficking victimization and perpetration. For example, we work very closely in ethnic minority communities to educate them about trafficking risks, to help them keep their children in school, but most importantly, by ensuring that they have access to government services and that they have livelihoods opportunities at home. Through this, we believe that we can not only reduce trafficking victimization, but it means that traffickers do not have to resort to this crime to earn an income. We believe that with the right combination of trafficking prevention activities and poverty reduction strategies, ending poverty-driven human trafficking in Vietnam is possible.